Hi, Nick from Patrick's here, and today I'll be introducing the triple oscillator bank called the Hummingbird by Northwest Synthesizers. This is their first module. They are based out of Washington, and I'm very excited to introduce it because when you look at it, it is clearly inspired by uh, the Minimoog. We have three oscillators here. Each of them can be individually driven via CV, tracks one volt per octave, or optionally, if you do just want all of them to follow, you could just patch into oscillator one. Uh, we have a mod input down here, which can either change the pitch of every single oscillator or do an offset on each of these waveforms, which I think this is one of the more exciting things about this is that each of these oscillators have their own different waveform that they could go to. So typically when we would look at um, different oscillators and ensemble oscillator banks like this, we're just using more of the same oscillator with the same sort of wave shape, maybe not such a granular control like this, but I think this is excellent. And it isn't just a toggle between, say, triangle or square or pulse width, but it's a continuous range between them. Uh, surprisingly, this is actually a digital module, but the uh, creator of it really wanted it to still sound like a fat analog oscillator with the fixings of digital, which means that we get nice features like these. Each of these oscillators have uh, a continuous potentiometer that latches onto these different octaves. So then you can create um, sort of thicker chords uh, on the octaves, but we also have a sub oscillator down here, which is uh, based on oscillator one. And then we also have these pitch adjustments, which all the way to the right goes to positive five uh, semitones, and all the way down goes to negative four semitones, which is positive five on the lower octave. So it's really easy to just dial in the sound that you want without finicking too much with it. In this particular patch here, you could see that I actually am trying to replicate a Moog. We have each of our individual oscillator outputs running into our shades, which we're using as a mixer. Uh, and then we're running that summed output into our dope for filter, which is a 24 dB low pass transistor ladder filter, which you would find in Moog synthesizers. And then that all runs through the Javelin, which is both acting as our uh, combo VCA envelope generator and driving the filter. And off screen here, I'm going to be playing a few uh, sound demos using the key step, but obviously you're free to use whatever sequencer or control surface that you're used to. So let's let's do a few sound demos. Okay, so I, I've patched in the key step into oscillator one, and we'll just hit a note here and immediately hear how it sounds. And immediately you could hear just how big and thick it is, which is what you would want and expect from something like an oscillator bank based on a Moog. And obviously, again, the, with this ladder filter, opening and closing it by hand or with that uh, envelope generator definitely reminds me of playing a Moog. It's great. But then, let's turn this up and drive it a little bit. Um, you could hear that we could vary the different waveforms per the oscillator, which give it kind of a varying hazing effect to give it more width. And then we could also start playing with these octave switches. And you can hear that it actually works pretty well by the time we get to, this is not a detented knob, but it does latch over to the different octaves really intuitively. And then so. Yeah, I think you'd be kind of hard pressed to think that that's uh, not an analog oscillator because of how, how great it sounds. And then with this pitch, let's try that fifth up. So yeah, it's just easy. Just turn all the way to the right. Since it's digital, it knows exactly where it needs to be. Pitch it a fifth down. So when we look at a setup like this, it is a little bit unconventional because we have a lot of control at our hand. A lot of times when I'm working on putting together a system, I kind of have two mindsets. It's either that I want to have everything small and ready, so I have the most kind of quote-unquote bang for your buck per size, 
something like this, as I'm playing around, I'm able to just reach over and grab exactly what I want. If I want to drive an oscillator a little bit more, I can do it in the mixer. If I even just want to hold this down and change that waveform, I can hear exactly how that sounds as I'm doing it, and it's easy for me to go right back to it. So I do like how much real estate is on this thing and is given to the controls, because it does ask me to go and, and play around with it and do a lot more sound design that way. Um, Yeah, just slight detune right there. You could hear how those waves are really pushing against each other and really giving that kind of aggressive growl. Sweet. And you may be asking why the shifty's over here and I haven't even touched it, but uh, just stick around and we'll get to that. So right now we're actually gonna start incorporating the shifty into this patch. And the way the shifty works is that it's an analog shift register which will take note data and pass it down between input one, two, and three, and optionally four. Right now we only have three oscillators to drive, so we have four unpatched. But I'll show you how this sounds. I have a key step over here, and as I push the notes, right now they're all gonna be set to C. So every single one of these will begin that C, but as I play an E flat, you can hear now we're kind of beginning the chord. The E flat is here in this first register, Second register has C, C, and if I play G, then it'll push it down. So this will be a G, E flat, C. So here that, cool. And I'll always keep on cycling it. So uh, when you use like arpeggiators, you can create a really cool moving chordal structure. So I'll turn on the arpeggiator and we'll just hear that start to go. And while that's running, we can then start playing around with the different waveforms. And we're also coming out of this oscillator mix now, so we have the option to have that sub, which is following oscillator one, in or out. And you can hear that it actually is kind of a subtle effect since we're kind of low on the register. Um, but you could hear it coming in there. It sounds nice, it really fills out the sound, especially when doing a trick like this. So you don't need to use the shifty, you can use something like a Keystep Pro or anything that creates chords to drive the oscillator bank with chords. I just find that it's very interesting to use the shifty to create these chords, these moving chords that are always um, running in this sort of paraphonic mode where each of these oscillators are being independently driven. Beautiful. So. I'd like to know how you guys would drive a oscillator bank like this. Would it be with shifty sort of interesting sequencers? Leave your comments below. And like always, shop's open. Email us at info at and we hope you have a great day.